Well, it looks like we got the memo on dress code today. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. I, I feel like we're twins. Yeah. 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 This was not, this was not planned? No, it was not. No, yeah. it was this scripted. I'll just say, this was not scripted, so sorry, Jarrell, I'll go off yeah. script, but like working with Jarrell so closely, there's nobody that I'd rather get confused with or be like. Like, this is a good man right here. We're fortunate that he's in his role. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, we've all heard the question, are we there yet? And whether you've asked it or been asked the question, and it's an important question, one of the things that's also important is not to miss what's happening on the way to where we're going. And so I want to talk a little bit about that so that we don't miss that, especially as it relates to our high school director. What some of you may not know is that we are currently looking for a high school director, and in the interim, Joanna Elrod, who is our service programming director, is also acting as our high school um, director. And she's also working with Becca Grasty, and they're doing a phenomenal job. This, this ministry year is off to a fantastic start. They've increased the number of volunteers by 50%. And yes, that's worth clapping for, absolutely. But it's, just not, it's not about the 50%, it's about the fact that there are more people walking into discipleship of our high schoolers and walking with them. And not only are they walking with them, but Joanna and, and Becca are challenging them to teach. So they're teaching on Sunday nights and, and growing in their ability to share their faith. And they're not just doing that they, with walking with the students and teaching, but they're also reaching out to the students who are high schoolers who currently are not coming. And they've been reaching out via text and postcards. And last week, seven of those kids showed up. And that's seven kids that weren't coming before. And again, that's a blessing. And then we have Nate, who is going to be doing a leadership training. As a matter of fact, today, after second service, for our um, middle school and our high school students, and the leaders as well. And what's great about it is that our high schoolers and our middle schoolers are saying, hey, I want to be here after second service on a Sunday to learn how I can lead my peers. And so if we only focus on trying to get to the high school director, then we miss all the things that are happening that are really great things. And what I continue to say is that Though we may not have what we want, which is the high school director, we have more than what we need. And by that, we're blessed. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, waiting. Waiting. Have you ever gotten something only to realize that you'd been longing for it, but then once you got it, you realized that you actually had not been ready for it before. So the waiting was a good part of the journey. So often that happens, and you know, we have, been, we have been waiting for two years since our senior pastor resigned for a teaching pastor, and we've been waiting on that and discerning God's will. But let me just assure you that there's a difference between waiting and sitting idly by. We have not been sitting idly by. There's been a great deal of work meeting candidates, talking to candidates this week, actually going into a new round of candidates, meeting upwards of 20 guys so far, that we've been praying with and working with and interviewing and meeting to discern, is this the person that God is bringing for us? But we know that God is preparing us for our next teaching pastor, and he right now is preparing that next teaching pastor for us. And we know that along the way, there's much work to do and things that we've been doing. We've been working on foundational issues. I shared with Jarrell that this morning on the Bible app, the verse popped up around a man building his house on a firm foundation. And we believe as a church that we need to build our future and our current reality on a firm foundation, and that's on God, but also the, the practices and policies and the ministries that we would have here. So we're waiting on that timing. We believe God is preparing us. We believe God is preparing that teaching pastor for us. And in the meantime, we will continue to be seeking actively and to be praying together. Um, in the meantime, I hope that you would agree with me that we have been so incredibly blessed by wonderful teaching. Nate and Brian this morning, Joe, a couple of weeks ago, Jeff, other people, other men who have come and just ministered to us in such wonderful ways. So we know that God's timing is perfect and we will continue to wait um, and work. Amen. And we are blessed. We're, we're, uh, we're blessed in so many ways. We're blessed to be able to do the work that we're doing. You know, one of the things is we had bap baptisms last week. This year alone, we've baptized 26 people. Yes, yes. 
And it's not about the 26, it's about the lives that are changed. The people that des decided to say, I want to profess my faith to everyone, my, my belief in, in, in the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're here for. And we, we've been challenged in lots of ways. What some of you may not know is how I See Kids Camp came about this past summer. You know, prior to that, it was called Spring Hill Camp. And Spring Hill was an is an organization that comes in and does a camp for us for a week. Well, this year they weren't able to do that, but that didn't stop us from having a camp. And that's how I See Kids Camp was birthed. And it was an awesome week. And uh, yes, absolutely. And it, it was an awesome week. And uh, though we did not have what we wanted, which was Spring Hill, I think we got something better. And we have to continue to recognize that that's how God is moving, even though we don't have all the things we want. We still have more than what we need. And then lastly, as uh, Steve mentioned, Joe Borman. Joe Borman was our senior pastor for 26 years, and he retired seven years ago. What a blessing it is to still have him teaching us on Sunday mornings. And not only is that a blessing to have him teaching on Sunday mornings, but it's also a statement that there's more to life after retirement and that God can continue to use you wherever you are in your faith. So um, with that, we'll get ready for Joe to come out and teach us about how God is love. Thank you.